Hey guys, Jeff here, and today we're building walls out of fence board to create an overlap siding look. And we're gonna do this with just basic hand tools. Now listen, this is a great DIY project that anybody can do alone. Let's jump into this. All right guys, we are five hours into this build, and I got about an hour until lunch, so we're just gonna get some walls built while we're standing around. Look at the stick. All right, hockey sticks. Um, here's the system, I'll try to explain it the best I can. I am going to be using two by twos, okay, as a nailing strip for fence boards. So, <laughs> it's a very rustic look, but it's really effective because it has a great ability to um, divert water because we're using overlapping fence boards, okay? So it kind of looks like an old cedar shaker house. The benefit of this is these materials are always available. They don't come in and out of season. Because we're using basic materials, they're always in stock. So you never have to have that much planning ahead except for the roof. And then I got another one here. The best thing about this, well, put the sticker at the top and we'll get cut off, is I'm just lining all of these posts on each side and each corner. We'll get all 12 of these done. And then we're ready to measure and cut the fence boards in. All right. Now I'm just putting in a screw about every 16 inches. Avoid going through knots or it'll just split that board in half. There we go, I'm ready. I can actually close this part of the wall up right now. Now, because if you watched the last video, you know how we built this, my measurement down here will be the same up top. 48 and a half. 48 and a half, 48 and a half. So here we go, we're gonna mark 48 and a half as exact, but we want a little bit of breathing space on each side. I should go 48 and, um, and 3 eighths. Yeah, instead of 48 and a half. Give ourselves a little bit of air. There we go, this is an exposed edge. Okay, if you want to use a stain sealer, you can, but we are going to use a spray sealer. So when we're putting our stain on, it's going to be under compression, and I'm sure that that is going to get all the material it's going to need. Let's just go and throw the first board in, and I'll show you how this works. Ooh, so tricky. <laughs> when I'm tight against the left side, this is the gap that I have to play with. So I'm going to just split the difference a little bit. All right, there we go. And because it's the first board, it, there's no overlap on the bottom, I like to do this to create the overlap. All right. So I'm just kind of setting the depth of that screw to be similar to an overlapping scenario. There we go, now it looks very normal. That's it. One screw on each side. We're gonna start it. We're gonna burn it in reverse. That's it. I know, rocket science, right? <laughs> but what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a jig so that every board after the fact gets set at exactly the same depth, okay? And uh, by the end of this video, we're gonna have this structure ready to build the roof, and that'll be in the next video. Mm. Okay, so here's the plan. Now you can see we're gonna have this overlapped, right, where the post extends past it. It's gonna be a great look. I'm gonna stain all these boards, stain the deck. The rim and the posts are gonna get painted black, as well as the rim around the top of the roof. So this is all gonna work out great. But what I'm looking for is, how do I set the height so that it stays consistent? So I need a jig. Let's figure out where we are. That is my height, like that. I'm gonna go overlap, but I don't wanna waste material. Okay. But I also want to have it so that after this has been around a while and dried out and maybe shrunk a little bit, 
um, it doesn't open up a big gap in the fence either. <laughs> okay, here we go. So if that is full board, I think I want to take half an inch off and we'll check that. That's good. That'll work out really good. So we're going to just mark this one off right now. Okay. We don't install this one. We're going to rip a half an inch off of it. Throw a couple of temp screws in. Perfect. Every time. Now that's going to work for me here. Uh, how's it going to work for me the next time? Next board goes over top. I take my said jig. Let's get jiggy with it. And I'm just holding it flush with my fingers down here on each side. And that's all I get. Now you'll see this board has a bit of a up curve on it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this curve, this gap, and I'm going to Hold this steady and bring that down, but the same as that gap. That way, on the left and the right side, I'm finished at the same height. Okay? So, we'll just keep that going all the way across. Run the tape in there behind it. I'm at 15 and a half, 15 and 5 eighths. Oof. I'm just a hair off over here, guys. But this is one of these situations where that matters. We'll go back up a hair. Okay. There we go. So we'll use the jig. We'll set the sides. We'll run the boards up. Get close to the top. Do the, both panels. And as you go, if you want to put a level, you can have a small level on here. Or you can just measure it down on each side. Might kind of make sure that you maintain that that spacing and then uh, we're gonna be okay okay perfect most of these fence boards have a bit of a curve to them so you can work with the curve of the grain because we're overlapping and there's pressure and the board tends to want to curl under that pressure. Having it go with the grain, the natural curl is a benefit. Okay, this is one of those curved boards. What we're going to do is we're going to just measure this back. The board's curved 40 and 3 quarters. Whew. Okay. All right. Oh, this is going to just work so much faster now. Okay. Okay, almost here. So we're going to go one more board so that then we can finish at that height, whatever that is. And then I'm going to show you how to create a jig. We're going to create a marking jig like a, like a storyboard that we can set up and translate the height of all these finished boards to every other 2x2 two two on the whole shed. All right, now let's go and get that storyboard working out. Here we go. We're time to translate some lines and dimensions. Ah, okay. This is how easy this is. Arrow up. 
<laughs> okay? And here we are. There's a fence board, there's a fence board, and so on and so on. And I'm just gonna mark all the way across. Try to go straight, Jeff. All right. Yeah, if you come and go a little bit on these lines and they're not perfect, that's okay. I mean, it is wood. We have a nice overlap for a reason. But this gives us a good starting point so we can be somewhat consistent. I gotta get this out of here now. <clears throat> okay, so now I can come over here. Here we go. So now we know that's my spot. Come over here. Here. Nice. Time to move this. Uh. Okay. This is just in the way now. Uh. Problem solved. Now the goal here is to get The, um, the actual dimensions all squared off and frame in on all four sides the structural components of the roof, which are basically two by eights front and back and most likely just a two by four on the side. It's just there so that there's a backing for the cutoff in the boards. We'll show you that in just a minute. Again, for now, this is just a repetition of the same system. Two by two on every four by four. It's not that tricky. It's just uh, takes a little bit of patience to get there. Woohoo! Yeah, that is nasty. Okay. <laughs> Six foot fence board. That's what you get, eh? How's that one? That just barely closes, doesn't it? Oh, Lord. Are we okay? A little to your left. Okay. Okay. We're good there. Okay. So for extra stability, When we get to the very top, you'll see how we tie it all in together. But for now, here's a trick. When you screw like this, you're pulling the wood this way. But if you screw like this and you leave a gap here, then when you catch the wood, you move your finger and now you're screwing on a downward motion. And it'll help close that board off. It's the only thing you can do with a warp. And I'm gonna suggest even using a two and a half inch screw here. So that you have enough thread inside the meat that it won't pop out. We're establishing the, the we what do you call it? The levelness of this. Should we, uh... Okay, there we go. That's the effect of the storyboard. If you start on a 45 and you can go look left and right, check those lines out, 
That's pretty sexy. Okay, that's it for me today. I'll come back in the morning when it's cool down and we'll finish this up. Ah, I just wanted to say one of the benefits of building a shed like this, completely out of pressure treated, is that um, once we get a roof on, we're dried in, we're weather tight, we're ready to use it. Even though we have to wait a couple months to get the paint job done, it's not the end of the world because it functions right away. And from the beginning, the plan is to have a six foot door, which is this height, plus an extra board at the bottom, which gets my door to finish off at 78, which is minimum code. Um, so it's gonna look, le look normal and act normal. That is about two inches higher than my actual finish point here. So what I'm gonna do is put on this board and then this one and then one more. So three more boards to set the front height so that we can create a slope. And then once we get it I finalized by doing the boards, then we will make all of the adjustments necessary to all the posts so we can do our roof rent, okay? At this point, I'm just gonna take a walk around. We finished off yesterday in the heat and we were exhausted. So let's do a quick walk and make sure that everything looks normal from the angles, right? So from here, everything looks really nice. Level off and horizontal. Here, everything is good. Beautiful. Here, it looks like I hired a drunk sailor to help finish up. Uh, I'm not sure what happened here. Oh, wow. Okay. This is perfect. Something went wrong with the way I marked that storyboard. Or I just got too tired and I just thought it was level. These are all installed too low. Somewhere I made a mistake. So that one's right. That means all of these are off. Just take the time to correct this. Okay. That's the money. All right. Uh, uh, at least with this system, it's really easy to find and fix mistakes, okay? So uh, there's another benefit to going in this direction. This is gonna serve as my structural load point. I'm gonna install it with screws for now, and then we'll add a couple of structural screws that, like we use on the foundation later. And that will transfer the load directly into the, the 4x4 post. This is only 2x6, so we're going to want to screw that in all three of these posts. And that'll be a piece of cake. I guess I better do that. I need to get something on here as a mark. 52 and an eighth. Um, put that to the inside. Make sure we're using new markings. 52 and an eighth. There's the beginning of my post. We'll go with one screw for now. I can get this perfectly leveled when I'm done. Let me know when you think that's perfect. I think your side has to go up. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect right there. <laughs> I love it when that happens. Now we're just going with uh, two of these screws for now, top and bottom, and then we're gonna just switch out your bit. I'll have you put a structural one in the middle, okay? Okay. So I need a structural screw in the middle of each of these three posts. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we'll be good. So there, the back is done. We have now set the height of the roof on the back. These little pieces in this post all have to be cut down to fit. Now, uh, which means we've also set the height for the front. This two by six here, we have the option of having it on the inside or the outside. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have exposed rafters, okay, on the front overhang. And so part of my roof design is to put in um, tongue and groove boards and then fill in the rest of the roof with a three quarter OSB so that that exposed tongue and groove can be stained in with all of the boards, all right? In order to get sexy, I need my structural support on the inside. All right, so in order to do that, I gotta cut away my extra two by twos so that I can get this set at the right height. All right. I'm 
So, <laughs> when we're all said and done, I'm gonna have a two by four coming in behind here, right? All the way to the end. And that two by four will travel behind this board, the same face as this one is, and behind the other one. All right, so I'm gonna take my measurement for my new header from this location right here, all right? And then what I'm gonna need to do figure out exactly where I'm finishing off. There you go. This mark to the same location on the other side, that becomes the width of the new header. So then my purpose here is this. If I cut this off with my oscillating tool, then I can actually put this right where I want it to the four x four at this point, okay? On that face, on this face, on this face, and then the same over there. So. First thing we gotta do is measure from the outside of that two by two over here. 103 and three quarters. I'm gonna write that down. 103, three quarters. That's my chicken scratch anyway. So here we go. Two by fours. This becomes our new roof, All right? That's on the two by six on the back. That's on my face board here. If I want to have a sexy detail when I'm finished, I need this touching here, okay? Same thing on the other side. Here we go. There we go. Okay? All right. I'm going to take this mark right here. That's what I'm going to do. Translate this piece to here. Okay? So I'm square on the pipe. I'm square on the bottom. This is the top of it. That's the contact point, okay? And now I want to measure down five and a half represents the thickness of my two by six. I want to cut right to here. All right, so if I trim that there, my two by six will fit flat in this location. And over here, at the end of the day, if I'm a little bit high here, I cause a problem with the gap of the roof. Right? So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cut an extra quarter inch lower with my oscillating tool because I don't need this except as a nailing surface for everything that's finishing off. So I'm not going to worry about being exact here. I'm going to give myself a little bit of mercy. Obviously an extra screw in here. Okay. Woo! -hoo. Beautiful. Boom. Now, this is just a structural header. Just a structural header. Should be flush with your 2x2 two two outside corner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, flush there. That's fine. Yeah. And your two by four should be making contact with the siding on the front. Yeah, it's, there's like an eighth of an inch gap or something like that. Yeah, a hair is a split hair. I'm not worried about that. Okay. I'm actually, I'm a little bit high over here. How are we for level? You got to throw your torpedo on there? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Let me check out my side where I can actually use my eyeballs. Exactly. Perfect. Flush to the two by two. Okay. That's the key here right now. If it's not flush, push the wall out until it's flush, okay? Start your screw and then double jack and then off you go. All right, rock and roll. So now what we need is uh, some structural screws. Four of those, right? Boom, 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 all these posts. Mm -hmm. And that'll transfer, I don't know what, 3,000, 4,000 pounds, more than plenty in my world. Uh, I'm not going to get 4,000 pounds of snow. <laughs> so if we can get one of those in each of those posts, I'm great. Uh, structurally, we're using 2 by 6 and we can get away with it because our span is less than 5 feet from here to here. So that's the only structural laws I've got to concern myself with, and I am completely content with that. Now, the only other thing we got to do is we've got to come along now. I'm going to get a reciprocator out, and I'm going to top off all the rest of these posts that are in our way so we can get our roof installed flat. All 
All right, as you can see, this is the last face board that's attached to this 4x4. And so everything after that point is redundant, right? So we're just going to trim it all out of the way. All right. There's one. We get the slope where it contacts our post now. Now, we're not relying on either of these posts to carry any load. It's all over here on this. So we can cut these back and I think just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to maintain the height of this to pretty much to where it is so that I've got something to attach my 2x4 because I'm going to bring it up on an angle, okay, underneath, so I have a nailing surface for the rest of these boards. That can be done over here. Let's get this out of here before I kill somebody probably a lot easier if I cut it from the back side with the skill saw and then finish off with the reciprocator. Okay. Now, can you do a dry test for that for me? Take a uh, two by four from there and overhang it and see if it sits on this backboard. Okay. I'm just gonna end up doing this twice. Okay, whoa, under the two by six on the front. There we go. Oh, yeah, I'm just off a of hair. Bloody heck. All right, look at it, I'm just gonna take that hair off. Okay, try that now. Oh, yeah. That is so close I can taste it. All right, so now what we have here is we have an extension outside of the frame of the exact same height as the header, right? Okay. okay, so now take that whole two by four, lift it up and over and outside. All right, over to me, over there to under here. You hold it there. Okay, so that's gonna be the finished height. And then this is also gonna be the finished height right at this point. Okay. okay. So now what I can do is I can do this. I can put that on and now I can mark from the inside. This here gives me the length and the angle. You can take, now that we've marked the, the inside corner, the length and the angle, mm -hmm. it's gonna be perfect. Okay. But getting that measurement right the first time and getting the angle, it's frustrating. So by creating a jig you don't have to know how to use a square. You don't have to do any math. You just got to use a clamp, overhang it, and then freehand it. It's kind of like doing tile work. You don't measure anything on tile. Everything's measured to, to spot. <laughs> so now we got the angle and the length. Okay. Let's see if uh, let's see if we did this right. We're gonna, get it. we're gonna finish this up to be sexy, right? Yeah. And the, the reason this is happening is because we're not using sheet goods, right? So there's your outside nailing surface. Okay, so what we do here is we mark this, that well, gets cut. We're, we're not exactly flush up here yet. Uh, it's, it's okay, we're just getting rid of that backer. Okay. We're marking here and we're gonna cut it off, okay. all right? And then I want you to mark the other end of that stick because you're gonna shorten that up as well to the inside, inside of that two by six. Okay, so now we've got the right height and the right length to frame interior of our face boards. So we can finish those all the way up to the top. Nice. Okay? Okay. It's, it's, it's back and forth, but it's simple. So if you can throw me um, the uh, skill saw. Try that two by four and see if we know what we're doing.
So there's my location here. Put him right up. It's going to be flush on the outside. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. So as long as I'm flush, I'm good. All right. Brilliant. 7158. Next, next, next deck board, 7158. So now it's just a matter of uh, measuring, marking, and tracing out. So what we can do is I can actually lay a board on top where the next one goes, make sure it's level, and then just trace the backside to this angle, and then just cut them all off. They'll overlap and, and finish up really nicely. All right, so I'm gonna go like this, and make sure this is level. Beautiful. Now I've got a nailing surface here. This is going to make my life a lot easier. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little downward pressure on that one. Okay, now Matt, we're gonna stick that one on and you're gonna trace that line from the backside, okay? Here we go. Okay, let me just get the level on it. I've got about a half an inch. Hold on, I gotta start with a half an inch overhang. There you go. That's yours, rip that. And then we'll do the same thing with the next board, but I think the next one will probably be only like three feet long or something. Sweet. Let's do it. All right. Do we have any five foots left? No. Okay. Not the end of the world. There's just nothing here that looks level. Okay. Yeah, I can deal with that for sure. Okay. That's a knot, we'll keep it away from that. Yeah, just cut a 36 and then bring it over. We'll save the other one for the other side. That makes sense? Now here we go, because now we know we're gonna have issues when we get near the top, right? So when we put the roof on, we're gonna have two by fours making contact with this one, basically right beside it. And then we're also gonna have um, a trim piece on the outside. I'll explain to that in the roof video. So make sure you're tuned in next week, guys. And if you're subscribed or if you're not subscribed, take care of that business, but uh, more importantly, Make sure you hit the, the notifications bar. Set it to all notifications, okay? If you don't want to miss any of the series. Right? And then we just gotta drop it in place with the overhang. Oh, easy dog, that's a <coughs> lot of tension. I like that. There you go, this side's done.
Beautiful. Okay. Let me get rid of this temporary brace. Let's do a measuring from floor to the top of that 2x4 where it comes in contact with the post over there. And I'm more interested in the 4x4 four four post. Okay, the 4x4 four four post is 81 and a quarter. Okay, let's go with that. And translate that around the front for me. And I'll get the uh, oscillating tool and I'll trim that one off. Boom. All right, those two are out of the way. There we go. And you can throw that through the saw. There we go. There we go. And I'll take that other saw. Boom. Now you gotta trace that line. You got it. You come back, stick all that together. So you can see, once you've done it once, or you've developed a system, it actually moves quite quick, because you don't have to think it through. It's just a shed. All right. All right, and then you can do the, the two of that face. That's a nailing surface. Let's pull out the temporary block. Let's get these other two cut in. So the first one was uh, 71 and 3 quarters, right? 71 and 3 quarters. Let's get that one cut up here. We'll trace a line. We've got two cuts, and then we'll knock those other three posts off. And that's the walls, baby. That's the walls. That makes a good day. That puts it at uh, three hours to finish this one today. That takes us to 11 hours. Huh? That leaves us five hours to build a simple one-sided slope roof. <laughs> Hang a door. We're going to knock this out of the park tomorrow. So hot. All right. Okay. Oh. You need to hold that in place for me? Okay. So on average, our boards are four, almost five. All right? Yeah, almost five inches. So, I'm gonna need you to move your hands because that's looking dangerous to me. I don't want you to pinch your fingers. I'm gonna set the board around there and around there. I'm gonna get the screw on the other side. Can you hold that there? Sure. Okay. All right. Now, let's get another board. Um, 71 and three quarters, give or take, eh? Here, here we go. There it is. Okay, so we're just bring it down till it's flush. Gotcha. Okay, no, no, no. Got to overlap it and go flush. All right. Then we'll come over here. Beautiful. All right, now the only other thing we're gonna have happen here, Matt, is on the other side. We're gonna probably take a little bit of the, um, the deck board and then we will rip like a, a one inch, one and a half inch piece. Yep. Has a little picture frame okay. to cap over this, but I'm not worried about it. I think it's gonna look as stellar as it is. All right, now we just gotta cut the three posts on the front and the walls are up, baby. I can actually hear the difference. All right. Well, there we have it, guys. We now have walls. All we have to do now is uh, put a roof on this bad boy. <laughs> We're in business. <laughs>